Hi, I'm Michael Joy. Welcome to another reaction video. I want to say up front here, if you're a subscriber or catching this video randomly, just know that this is a mold making video. We make a lot of content here and I'm a professional mold maker. And so you may or may not want to be on this bus if you're interested in some other things. But for the makers out there, get ready. Hi, I'm Michael Joy. Welcome to another mold making critique in our manufacturing platform. I'm going to stop calling them reaction videos because we're migrating to the manufacturing platform. So as always, the invitation is there for other mold makers to send some highlight reels or indications of other mold makers, things they'd like to see or have talked about. I saw this video the other night, not quite the whole thing. And what I liked about this is it more speaks to the reality of what sculptors face. Most people cannot afford the time or the materials to make a silicone mold of every sculpture that they make. And a lot of people that are learning how to sculpt basically just want to stabilize something that they've made so that they can recycle the clay. It's not that they've sold that or things like this. They want a 3D record. These days you can scan your piece. You don't have to make a waste mold of any kind. You can digitize your work. However, However, you can't express digital work in a gallery. And what is actually acceptable in some art environments is that you, the sculptor, are having a show and you would present plaster maquettes of your sculpture and maybe they're finished in bronze. And then if somebody buys that sculpture, then they have the price from the foundry already to know, I understand that the artist couldn't front 15 grand to make this and have 12 of them in the room just on the potential sale that they're displaying their plaster models and then you know, it turns into an advanced commission. That's really the reality of most sculptors. Uh, you can't afford to, to make molds and bronzes and stuff. So I wonder where this is, Nasher. My name is Michael O'Keefe. I'm an artist working here in Dallas, Texas. Must and be a good sign, I'm itching already. With plaster as a material making waste molds on clay sculptures, which is the process that I'm going to demonstrate here in this video. The sculpture that I'll be casting in this video is a sculpture that was made from observation with a model. And I was trying to work in a very similar fashion to the way Rodin might have worked, or perhaps Matisse might have worked, modeling in clay from a live model. The materials you'll need for this process are the He's very well itself, organized. Metal shims, plaster, water, buckets for mixing plaster, oil soap and a brush, a hammer and chisels, a It's a nice three-quarter view clamps, also, and slightly spatula. elevated. I dig it. The first step in this process nice font. is to insert metal shims into the sculpture. All these little things we the look at. The shims are meant to divide the sculpture into two sections. In this case, I'll be making a two-piece plaster mold, mm -hmm. dividing the sculpture into uh, a front half and a back half. Next, we have to mix some plaster. And to make plaster, we add the gypsum powder to water. Roughly I like that he's working with a small one, amount. But the best way to mix plaster is to do, use your eyes and to add powder to water until it just barely sits on the surface of the water. And then you simply stir the lumps out of the plaster so it's a nice smooth consistency. I mean, boom, they get right into it, right? Apply the okay. Now, the only thing that I would do different at this moment is I would have thrown iron oxide into his first layer of plaster. The reason is, is, is will become apparent later. But so far, this guy's done this a lot, you can tell. Face coat of plaster to the first half of the sculpture using a brush. Some people will, the old way is, is they'd put the sculpture against the wall and they would take it and they would flick. They would flick the plaster in but it's messy and a brush is probably <laughs> the more civilized way to do it. You don't look like an animal. We want to use a he doesn't even have an apron. Sure that the plaster gets down into every little Let's see if he stays clean. nook and cranny of the clay. And it wants to be a nice thin consistency so that any air bubbles can escape mm -hmm. from the plaster. Yeah, you can. And oh. then we want to take a spatula with a mixture of plaster that's further along in the process of setting up so that you can use in your spatula. Then we want to add one more coat of 
plaster to the rest of the mold so that it's about three layers thick. The idea here Reasonable. is to have a relatively thin mold with a thicker section where the shims are. Mm -hmm. This gives the mold some uh, strength and, and durability. You just take some needle nose pliers and you pull out the shims At this point, and you clean up the clay. You remove the shims, sliding them out carefully so that you don't affect the original clay sculpture. You want to carve out some registration holes with a sharp tool, a knife or a chisel. So the way the shims create the stepping effect is actually registration enough. The mold keys, it's just an added perk. You don't really need them. So that the two halves of the mold will lock into place nicely when they're put back together. Here I'm painting on a clay slip to the shim line of the mold. This is nice. This clay uh, a lot of people don't talk about using clay as a release agent, but it's a very organic, easy way to do. It's effective and I never used it because I didn't have slip around as much as I did mold release. I would use Vaseline. It's my go-to. It's cheap. It's at the hardware store and it's safe. Slip is just diluted clay or mm -hmm. clay that's been it's a great mixed idea. with water. Once the, the slip is applied, then we can mix up another batch of plaster and start to brush it on the sculpture. This guy's nailing it. Making sure we get plaster into all of the crevices. Yeah, you just have to be careful of those eyes and getting the... sure that we put plaster... But he has a lot of room to correct any mistakes edge. later. After the first face coat... I think I would have had a laminated base. ...of thin plaster to the mold. That's about it. I, I got nothing to say. Okay. So he's done both sides, and he's cleaned up the edge work so he can separate this relatively easily and his sculpture is going to split in two pieces and he's sacrificing the clay model. That's not going to survive by design. Sides of the mold have three coats of plaster. Then it's time to add some supports that will give the mold a little bit more structure, a little bit more strength when it's time to pull the mold apart and then pour the plaster in the mold. These are just two pieces of hollow metal rod that I'm applying to the mold using burlap dipped in the plaster and then rolled up and then stuck onto the surface of the mold. Okay. Once the plaster has Why not? sufficiently set on both sides, then it's time to crack open the mold. Man, I can At just sit back and watch it. very lightly until the seam line fractures just slightly. At this point, I like to stick butter knives in the crack and wiggle mm -hmm. them a little bit to loosen the two halves of the mold. The type of mold we're making here is a waste mold, which means not only is the mold wasted after one cast, but also the sculpture is often wasted in the process now of the, this mold. That can be you reused. Can see here that my sculpture is essentially a lot of people sculpt in halves. oil clay, but this is okay if we've made a good mold because the sculpture is captured in the mold in the negative. Yep, it's super. Once you've cleaned out as much of the clay as you can, you want to then soak the sculpture in water. Mm -hmm. Once you've soaked the mold, you want to then pour some Murphy's oil soap into the mold and then use it. Okay, this is the one time that I'm going okay with the Murphy's oil because you need a heavy release agent on the inside of this waste mold because he's going to pour plaster into this mold when it's closed up again and that plaster is going to go into every nook and cranny and it's going to want to bond into this beautiful mechanical lock and he's going to chip it off so this soap that he has to use has to be heavy has to be heavy don't mess this up your whole work is gone using a large brush you want to swirl the brush around creating a froth mm -hmm. that covers the whole surface everything of the mold. You want to soap each half of the mold three times, rinsing the mold in between each application of the soap. And this will assure that the plaster mold will fall off. I would say in between each layer, give it some time to dry and then put another layer on. Mm -hmm. At this point, we can rejoin the two halves of the mold He'll need to stabilize it, it on something. 
burlap dipped in plastic. This is a great idea. And then rolled up and Love tacked it. onto the surface. This is a great idea. Uh, it's a great mechanical lock. Now we want to see. He doesn't have to worry about clamps. Around with dollops of plaster. He's not using to clay. Sure that no plaster will leak out of the mold. The thing is, is he has release agent on here, so it's not Once the a really strong goes, connection. Joining the two halves of the mold together is fully set. Mm -hmm. Then we can turn the mold upside down. Oh, he's got clamps too. Point, okay. We mix up a couple that of explains it. Plaster enough to fill the entire mold. At first it's best to pour enough plaster to fill only about a third of the mold and then slosh it's it It's a pretty watery sure thing because it's got to get into, into the all things. Of the crevices of the mold. That's going to create a lot of... More I, I don't like the mix that he's pouring in, but almost all the way to the top. he's... It looks lumpy. Shaking the mold is a way to make sure that air bubbles can escape from the plaster. You could actually drop a drill down there, mix it up. Like you might chip your model, but I don't know what the hell. It with a hammer, again trying to get out as many of the air. I would have rotated it upside down once, drained it. At this point, it's It'll best work. to wait at least an hour to make sure that the poured plaster is sufficiently set inside the mold. Then we can begin to remove the supports including the supports that hold the two halves of the mold together, and also chiseling away the, the seam of plaster that was... Yeah, it's a lot of trash. Crack it's okay, by design. You could see if he didn't have release agent, he would be, he'd be here all day. Once all the supports are removed, then it's time to crack open the two halves of the mold. Again, I start at the top of the mold, and I tap lightly at first trying to open that small seam again. Yeah, if you made your mold too thick, this is where you have trouble. It should just kind of crumble off. Now, this is why I was saying that I would have put a little bit of pigment in the mold that I made, because now he's chipping off a white waste mold from a white casting, and he had an organic sculpture. So now he's got to go through there and look and see what is mold, what is sculpture, whereas if the mold had been red with iron oxide, he could have just gone in and flicked off all the red pieces. So that's my opinion. Yeah, you want to be careful of this part. He's not, he's finessing, right? And he probably poured a much more dense hydrocal into the mold. You want to have your casting to be a harder material than your mold. As much as possible, you want to remove pieces of the mold from the thick shim edge. I at like this guy. Point, you'll have to remove some of the thinner sections by chiseling. I like his work, is what I mean, you know. Surface. And you want to make sure that your chisel doesn't gouge the plaster cast underneath. Once all of the large pieces of the mold are removed, you may have to use a smaller tool to pull out some small pieces of the mold that are stuck. Again, if it were red, it would be really easy to tell. You also need to use a tool to remove the shim line. But he can patch this thin, thin pretty easy. Plaster that sticks up along the shim line. Assuming the mold is made properly, in what the happened? End, one should have a perfect. How do they get their pictures up so the soon? Sculpture. The only difference Ours doesn't do that. is that the final sculpture is in plaster rather than clay. A pleasure to watch. It was short. It was to the point he didn't look like he was struggling with any step of the process. Now, the, the reason is, is a very simple process. There's no chemistry to understand. And this is why what I was saying at the beginning is very relevant. Most sculptors are interested in their sculpture, not the mold. The mold is a pain in the ass to a sculptor. It's expensive, it's time consuming, and it's like a necessary evil. So the pleasure of the build is what the artist really wants. And that's why most sculptors were not mold makers. It was they would sculpt and then they would turn it to a mold maker. Even Rodin, who understood mold making, he had, he was very rich, he had um, mold makers. I don't remember hearing the number, but it was a lot of mold makers. And they, 
he didn't have to get slowed down by it. So this is terrific. Only one piece I would have put in, and that's the red. But uh, Nasher Sculpture Center, we're going to watch more of yours because if they're this well made, uh, it's not that you need uh, me to um, bring any attention to you at all, but what I'm bringing is appreciation of it looks like this gentleman is really caring for what he makes and he's chill. He's probably taught a lot of different people and uh, he just makes everything look easy and he didn't get messy. I mean, he could have done this in a tuxedo. So Nasher guys, high five, high five. Well done. Pleasure to watch. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. We're getting ready to launch a new platform called Handufacturing. It's going to feature a lot more educational films about mold making and casting from very basic to advanced mold making. Our hope is that it helps the business entrepreneurs out there learn efficient ways to manufacture their products and bring a lot more wealth into their household. Stay tuned.